All right, this time around, we're gonna make a brick wall. It's gonna look like this when we're done, but a lot bigger. It's gonna be that big. Stay tuned. everybody thanks for tuning in to Popaville old gauge trains on a budget and today we're gonna make a brick wall it's gonna go all the way back along there this is the piece I'm using back here and it's gonna cover this back wall section right there when it's done it's gonna look similar to that hopefully a lot nicer I'm gonna put a little bit more detail in it but we're gonna show you how to do that so first we're gonna start with what I'm using this is a half inch, call it, basically it's an insulation, it's a half inch. Uh, this is the one that's, the brand is Pink Panther or something like that. I picked it up at my local big box hardware store. A four by eight sheet, cost about $15. Um, you can use this for a million different things. A lot of guys will actually use this as uh, underneath their track for a sound deadening. Um, I like using it for different scenery type stuff. And uh, this is what we're gonna use it for today. So for starters, I had to cut a piece. This one is uh, about 73 inches long. It's about seven and three quarters height. It's gonna fit perfect right back there. Um, we're gonna start out with putting grooves in it. As you see, it's gonna be very tedious and it takes a while. Okay, so now comes the hard part. Or not hard, but time consuming. You gotta Using a, a pencil without a real sharp point to it, a little bit of a rounded point, or you could use, um, I mean, kind of anything. I've, I would actually try to make a jig using track pins that I could just run it all the way down at one time. Because what you're wanting to do is you're putting in your, hang on a second, let me reach over here and grab this. You gotta put in all the, the indent lines for these bricks. So I'm actually gonna take this upstairs, do it on the kitchen table. I get a little bit more room there because uh, like I say, it takes a little while to do this. The bigger the piece, the longer it's gonna take. So let's go upstairs. Okay, so I'm in the kitchen now and uh, what we're gonna do is bit by bit, I'm gonna be laying out all the lines going across. Once I've got them all horizontally, then I have to go through and every other one to make the bricks stagger. I gotta put a little dash in each one, so this is gonna take a while. Okay, so it's about, let me look at the clock. Oh, it's about an hour and a half later, and I finally have it all done. I'll bring it up here close so you can take a look. Let's see, can you see that? There you go, you can see all the way across. Now one of the things that this foam board has, it's got a piece of plastic all the way on both sides as a, like a protectant. I like to do this down here you see me. I like to do this uh, with the plastic on. That way it doesn't leave all the pencil marks because sometimes the pencil marks will show up when I'm actually doing the painting. So we're going to pull that off. Okay, now the next step is gonna be painting the base coat down. Now you can do this in any color you want. If you wanna do it in a red for a red brick, uh, brown, you know, whatever color. I'm gonna use a gray as my base coat.
Okay, so while I'm waiting for this to dry, the next step after this will be, I'm gonna put in what they call a paint wash. Um, there's a number of different ways you can make a paint wash. You can just take your paint and dilute it with water. Uh, that's the simplest way. Um, you can go online. There is a ton of different YouTube channels that'll tell you how to make different paint washes. What I use is, I use a combination of, this is what they call a, um, a matte medium or a pour, pouring medium. So in, uh, I get these at the, also at the hobby shop. They're little, I think these are four ounce bottles. So I'll put about 50% water, about 40% of the, the uh, matte medium or the pour, pouring medium. And then I've put this in a different container. This is just uh, dishwashing stuff. It's uh, jet, called jet, jet dry. Put about 10% of this in there. Then I use acrylic ink. You can pick this also up at, at the hobby stores. Um, I've, depending on what color you're gonna wanna use, this is called Liquitex is the brand, but there are other brands to use. I think this was about five bucks a bottle, but this stuff goes a long way. Um, you'll mix this into one of these bottles and then start adding drops of the, of the acrylic ink. Um, I think the mix that I have here is approximately 25, 30 drops. Um, just put them in until you get to the color that you like. I mean, test it out on it. Like have a, 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 a test piece of foam that you have. So you can try the different um, consistency levels, you know, the darkness of them to get the actual uh, color that you're looking for. Um, I've already pre-mixed this stuff from a while back. I've used it before. I have a, br a brown. This is actually a burnt umber. Um, this is my black and I also have one in green. I'm going to use a little bit of each of these in different areas because um, I don't want it, everything to look just exact all the way across because this is going to be covering a large area. So, you know, some areas where if it's been there a long while, maybe some moss had grown on one and but, you know, our dirt had gotten on some different areas. Um, so I'm gonna give it a little bit of weathering look by using a few different colors. Some of them I'll use on top of each other too. Um, I'm gonna go get it in here. I wanna show you a piece that my wife actually made for me. It was a, uh, a tunnel entrance. So I'll be right back. So this is the piece that my wife did for me. You can see it's got a little bit more color to it. What she did was added a little bit of some browns and tans in there. And then when she did the wash on it, she used multiple washes with the final being kind of a greenish color. I think that came out really, really sharp. This is what kind of inspired me. And if you notice how she, even with some of them, gave it a little cracked look. Um, one of the things that I haven't done to mine, which I should have done before I painted, but I'm gonna go through, is she just took a rock and kind of gave it a rough rough finish by putting dents in it and stuff like that. So I'm gonna be doing that also, which I'll show you in a little bit. But yeah, this came out really nice. It kind of inspired me. She kind of showed me how to do this because uh, trust me guys, I am the farthest from being any type of an artist a person can be. So there we go. Let's get back to the project. What I'm going to do now is kind of, instead, so it doesn't just have this ultra smooth, I got a couple of rocks out of the backyard, and I'm just kind of denting up this foam a little bit. I don't want to have that perfectly smooth. I mean, if I was doing maybe a building or something, then I would want to maybe have a much smoother finish to it. It's nice and roughed up for now. So I decided to throw just a little bit of brown paint on there. Give it a little bit of a weathering look before I do the wash on it. So now I just gotta wait for this to dry. 
Okay, so I'm going to start off with uh, a black wash here. Um, trying to decide if I should just put it on there and rub it around. Can you see down on this end? That fills in those the cracks. Is it another dimension of color? terrible painting technique here <laughs> a lot of people are probably saying that's not the way you do that but this is just the way that I do it you can put it on heavier if you want lighter if you want Some people will put this on really heavy. As you see, it fills in with the mortar spots, but it doesn't cover up like where I had the brown here. You see, it doesn't really cover that up. It just it could because it's a light, you know, it's a wash. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of this out, and then I'll be back when I decide what I'm going to do next. I might do another color. Uh, we'll see. So now I'm just going to put a few drops of the green, just a little here and there. Literally just a tiny bit. Just to give it a little bit of extra color. up there didn't let it dry enough I'll have to touch that up. Man, we're gonna come back and fix that probably can't see it on here but there's a little spot right there that I just don't like okay so we're back in the train room I got it done I, honestly it could have come, come out a lot better, but I'm telling, showing you the technique on how to do it. Like I say, I am not an artist by any way. So let's take a look and see how it looks. I've, I've actually installed it now, so we'll take a look and see how it looks. Um, I got a little carried away with some of the different colors that I was adding in um, off camera. 
Um, so you take a look and you tell me what you think. All right, so that's it, guys. Um, the, the pipe, that, that white pipe, eventually that, I'm gonna do something with that. I'm not sure, I was thinking about maybe, see if I can, it's actually a pipe for my sump pump. I'm gonna see if maybe I can turn it into a smokestack or something. Well, we'll see in the future what I can do with that. Um, but hey, thanks for watching. If you got any questions, comments, definitely let me know. And always remember, like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. That way you can see when I got the new videos coming out. All right, you guys have a great day. Choo-choo!